All right, hello everyone. I am uh, Paolo Salazar, and um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you guys for just watching this video and uh, watching this presentation. And I'd also like to greet y'all a happy belated Thanksgiving. And uh, so I will be presenting on Clostridium difficile. And so Clostridium difficile is also often called C difficile or C diff. And if you've ever worked in some um, healthcare profession or if you ever shadowed. You um, definitely should have heard of C. diff because it's, it's um, completely prevalent within the hospital um, population or in any long-term care facilities. Um, it's, it is a bacterium that can cause symptoms ranging from diarrhea to life-threatening inflammation of the colon. And um, the accumulation of the infection it typically occurs after the usage of a widespread of antibiotic medications. And um, it's really any usage of an any antibiotics that can cause uh, the proliferation of C. diff. And um, some patients can be at higher risk because um, they may have had an, un an underlying gastrointestinal issue or prior, um, prior gastrointestinal surgery. But other than that, um, it's typically through the usage of antibiotic medications where C. diff um, is really prevalent. And like what I said, um, the common population and area for C. diff is uh, found in hospitals or in any long-term care facilities like in nursing homes, um, home health, or just anything like that. So the mortality, it's been seen through surveys. of um, The National Prevalence Survey uh, shows that the Clostridium difficile was the most commonly reported pathogen, causing about 12% of healthcare-associated infections. And that's about an estimated 80,400 hospital onset infections. This has been associated with a mortality rate of 6.9% at 30 days after diagnosis and 16.7% at one year. And, um, so Clostridium difficile is definitely a major player and major um, role in the healthcare associated infections. And it, it's, um, it's really prevalent in hospitals and care facilities and that's something that we'll just uh, continue to talk about as the presentation goes on. So the history of C. diff, it was uh, first isolated in the stool of a healthy infant by Hall and O'Toole and, uh, in 1935 and the species name was chosen to reflect the, the difficulty with its culture isolation. But it wasn't until 1978 where um, it was associated with human disease and discovered that it was um, just really the organism that was responsible for the majority of the cases of antibiotic associated diarrhea. And um, it was in 1970s and it was in the 1970s where there was a widespread use of antibiotics, uh, mainly clindamycin that really triggered the rise of C. diff. And over the span of those 20 um, years, um, there's a broad spectrum of antibiotics that were used in, um, in, the, in the penicillin and the cephalosporin families and that uh, fueled the C. diff uh, epidemic. So the bacteriology of our C. diff, it is a gram-positive rod-shaped bacterium that can exist in a vegetative or spore form. It's um, classified as an anaerobic bacterium that thrives in the absence of oxygen. And um, the most important um, thing to know is that in its spore form, Bacterium can survive, um, the bacterium can survive in harsh environments and common sterilization techniques. And that's why uh, the C. diff, its spores, um, they're highly resistant to high temperatures, ultraviolet light, harsh um, chemicals, and antibiotics. And that's why they have the ability to remain in the GI tract um, despite all the antibiotics that they take. Uh, that the patient takes, the Clostridium difficile is uh, highly resistant to it, and that's why it's um, able to um, stay in the GI tract. So the prevalence of that bacteria, um, like what I um, mentioned earlier, it is really um, associated with healthcare occurring in hospitals and healthcare facilities, um, where um, there's uh, the higher percentage of people carry the bacteria because of the usage of antibiotics and um, also because of um, gastrointestinal um, problems or surgery, but um, just mainly really through the um, reception of antibiotics. And the bacterium is passed uh, through feces and spread through food surfaces and objects which um, people touch uh, who are infected. And so the bacteria produces spores that um, just can really persist because of their high resistance to things in a room for about weeks or even months. 
And so um, it's passed through the feces and it spreads through the food because um, it's, the spores are forming and when, um, when, there's not properly, when they're not properly cleaning in these uh, clinical rooms or these hospital rooms, um, the spores are easily spread. And so the transmission of, of the bacterium, which I um, just quickly mentioned, that it does pass through feces and sp uh, spread through food and surface in the objects. And um, it's important to know that C. diff um, proliferates due to the usage of antibiotics. And now we have this um, normal flora that resists uh, coloniza colonization over and overgrowth of C. diff. Um, because they take up some space in our bodies, but when the use when we when patients begin to use antibiotics, that alters the intestinal microbiome, which then allows the proliferation of C. diff, and um, colonization occurs by the fecal oral route, and hospitalized patients are the primarily um, primary targets of the C. diff infection because again, of the antibiotics. And again, it passes through feces, it spreads through food, infections of the objects that, um, that usually just have in contact of the, um, the patient. And so when spores are formed, they persist in the environment for several months, years, um, like what we said earlier, because they are highly resistant. And um, so any, it's really any antibiotics that can pave the way for C. diff, but um, drugs that are typically known for the GI bacteria are clindamycin, penicillin, cephalosporin, and fluoroquinolones. So again, the life cycle of C. diff, and just the most important thing that, um, that we gotta know is that is a actively dividing form that transforms itself into spore stage. And um, so the spores are um, initially they're inert and metabolically inactive, so they do not cause disease, but are difficult to kill with disinfectants. But um, when the spores are shed into the feces, um, without any strict precautions, the spores become transmitted to hands, utensils, and foods, and so they become a lot. They come to life in the second person's GI tract. And um, as it multiplies and it grows, it produces toxins that injure the lining of the colon. So uh, in the healthcare profession, there are just many times where um, nurses, nurse techs, or just um, techs that are working with patients have to clean, um, have to clean patients, and they have to deal with their their um, their stool or just um, anything like that. And um, it's really easy to catch the. Um, it's really easy to pass on the bacterium through that and so if they are not um, taking precautions correctly um, it's very easy to uh, catch uh, the catch the bacterium and become infected and so um, the virulence factor it's the reason that the bacterium is able to cause infection because it releases um, two toxins known as uh, toxins A and B. Both toxins A and B are pro-inflammatory and cytotoxic. It results fluid accumulation and extensive damage to the large intestines, intestine. And um, it's been shown that they release inflammatory cytokines from mast cells and macrophages as well as from epithelial cells leading to the fluid secretion and intestinal inflammation, which um, leads to diarrhea. Also, fembrae is used for attachment in the gut, so they can be um, rid of easily, as well as uh, it produces capsules, which make it even harder for them to be eliminated. Now, the immune response of the body, um, C. diff colonizes about 60 to 70 percent of healthy newborns and infants up to 12 to 18 months, and um, they rarely develop colitis, but have large amount of the toxins in the stool, and so this uh, pr we presume that this is establishing the humoral immunity. So most patients with acute infection, therefore, do not exhibit, do not exhibit IgM response, but they rather exhibit the secondary IgG response, which is um, something that we've all learned, and um, which is the most common uh, antibody that um, that responds from the humoral immunity. So symptoms, uh, symptoms range from mild to severe and even life threatening, and so they call the range of symptoms Clostridium difficile associated disease, also known as CDAD. And so the mildest form is just really produces watery, watery diarrhea at least three times a day, usually accompanied by um, lower abdominal cramps. 
And there's the moderate form symptoms, uh, which is con um, where it starts to get a little worse, where there's profuse diarrhea, abdominal pain and fever. Nausea is usually common, and there may be traces of intestinal bleeding in the diarrhea. And uh, blood tests start to show high white blood cell count. In the severe form symptoms, uh, the temperature and white blood cell counts are very high. And the uh, patient's blood pressure may be low. And um, diarrhea, is, diarrhea, diarrhea is occurring from 10 to 15 times a day with abdominal cramping and pain, fever, and um, blood or pus in the stool, which um, causes a really bad stench um, in, this, in, the, um, in the odor of the stool. And um, there's a loss of appetite, weight loss, swollen abdomen, kidney failure, and increased white blood cells. And uh, so the severe form symptoms also lead to other things which we'll, I'll be talking about later. So diagnosis. Diagnosis, um, precise testing is really man mandatory and important. Um, I mean, there can be times where there will be an experienced nurse who may suspect C. diff because of the foul odor coming from the, the stool of the patient. But other than that, microbiologists um, typically culture C. diff, but that's been known to be slow and expensive, as well as detecting uh, C. diff in the patient's uh, feces. Um, so they've been doing immunologic tests that can identify the C. diff toxin in a matter of hours, and that utilizes immunoassays as well as cytotoxicity assay, um, which are both, um, well, immunoassays is a bi biochemical test that measures the presence of or concentration of a macromolecule, and um, cytotoxicity assay measures the cytotoxicity in the stool. And who's all at risk? Um, like what I mentioned earlier, it's definitely older adults in the hospital or in long-term care facilities. Um, but it's not only them, it's those who are also exposed to healthcare facilities, such as healthcare workers, families with um, patients in healthcare facilities, visitors, friends, um, but there also have been studies that have shown increasing rates of C. diff to younger and healthy individuals who do not have um, exposure to antibiotics or healthcare facilities. And that is known as community acquired CDI. And um, people who are at risk um, are typically seriously ill or have inflammatory, inflammatory bowel disease or col colorectal cancer and a weakened immune system. And like what I mentioned earlier, the uh, severe form of C. diff can cause critical form of C. diff, which is uh, known as Crohn's disease, which is an inf inflammatory bowel disease, which causes the inflammation of the lining of the digestive tract, which, which can lead to pain, severe diarrhea, weight loss, and malnutrition. And um, so the inflammation caused by Crohn's is, um, it's in its most critical form, it leads to toxic megacolon, and which is dilated and at risk for perforation where a hole begins to form. And, um, and also can lead to pseudomembranous colitis, which is the inflammation of the colon. So there are different types of treatment that can occur. And um, for the most part, the, the, main, uh, the first step is really to, take, to stop taking the antibiotic that triggered the infection. Um, but again, ironically, C. diff can also be treated by other antibiotics and the most commonly known antibiotic to treat C. diff is vancomycin and um, if there is organ failure or inflammation of the lining of the abdominal wall typically um, surgery will then be required to remove the diseased portion of the uh, portion of the colon and there's also a te um, there's also been a test that's been known that's not FDA approved but it is uh, research have shown that it's been 90 percent um, successful is known as the stool transplant, so the fecal microbiota transplant, or restores healthy intestinal bacteria by placing another person's stool in the colon of the patient by using either a nasogastric tube or through colonoscopy. And uh, probiotic, probiotics such as bacteria and yeast have also been known to help restore a healthy balance to the intestinal tract. And um, prevention, best way to prevent this um, if you're working at a healthcare facility, visiting, or just in general, if you want to stay healthy, you got to wash your hands. You got to just really practice good hygiene before and after treating slash working with each patient because um, who knows what bacterium, what bacteria are there, and um, who knows what uh, you can be infected with. And um, so in hospitals, there are typically patients who will have contact precautions when they're hospitalized 
They either have a private room or they share a room with the same patient with the same illness, but for the most part, they should have their their own private room. And um, before any staff or visitors um, enter the room, they must be wearing disposable gloves and gowns and um, sometimes even a mask while in the room and as they treat the patient. And so thorough cleaning must be important. All surfaces must be carefully disinfected with bleach and because um, that's the only thing that will kill um, the bacteria. And also avoid unnecessary use of antibiotics and just to really try to narrow it down to what infection is uh, causing um, the sickness or the disease in a body. So um, instead of using a broad um, usage of antibiotics, um, the best way to do is narrow it down. And that is all. Thank you guys. And uh, hopefully you guys don't get C. diff in your time and working in um, healthcare facilities. And I wish you guys the best. And that's awkward because I had to turn this off. Uh,